Right. Can you... Can you suck these nuts? Three. The speed wagon. That was a sick car. Let's go. Updated from the previous run. Now cleaner. I'm ready to go rain racing.
think those two not against them go too bad to be honest. I was expecting to get trounced a lot more. First one was terrible because I barely knew the map, but as it turns out, but uh Second game, not a bad game. I got some good positions. Shit. That is not good. This will have to be my last one, actually, because I've got a dog in just realised the time. Play B for Have you considered changing your name via deed poll to a Mr. Play Defrag? Mr. Play D frags my dad, I'm Mr. Play Momentum mod. in this direction.
I should put the music back on. I thought it was a bit quiet. Yeah, it's kind of nice not having the music on. Maybe I won't. Just hearing the noise of the engine. It's going to be a little bit calmer. Yeah, yeah, the stream embeddings seem to work. Um, yeah, it'll probably kick me back over at some point. Twitch embeds are weird, though. Because it, it looks like a fully valid thing until you actually go to send a chat message. And then it says redirecting you elsewhere to log in, which then just redirects you to the Twitch page. So why even have the ability to chat? Why not just put the thing like they used to back in the olden days, and YouTube still does, where it's like, you can't chat here. If you want to chat, go to our actual website, instead of pretending you can until you go to type a message. And then the time has probably gone by the time you've tabbed out, got an account and all that. Also, it appears to be that, that it'll let you gather points, the channel points on the page. This is nothing to do with uh, your setup, obviously. This is purely Twitch's embeds being stupid. It's like, but how am I supposed to gather channel points? Because I can't gather channel points. Because my account is the streamer account. So I have unlimited channel points. Oh, it could return you to G Leagues. I'm not sure. I didn't actually do it. I know it used to just hoof you uh, off to regular Twitch. But I think for most purposes it's good enough because if you're actually, if you care about watching the stream and actually engaging in the chat, you're probably going to be on Twitch and be happier to launch Twitch itself and be within Twitch to watch. And if you just want to see the stream and you're just there because you happen to be on G Leagues and there was a stream, then. Um, yeah, you'll you'll just stay on G Leagues and you'll be fine. You won't have a problem. Do you do a high leg? It will highlight your own username, but I don't know if it does it when you type it. Yeah. It's just the same as IRC, it'll highlight, but it possibly is a bit dumb and highlights even when you say your own username. Because Twitch chat is just IRC, a really, really heavily modified IRC. Yeah, that should ping a highlight over to that account.
All right, nice one. Cheers. See you later. Oh yeah, it does. Why was I thinking of you? I thought of you a minute ago. Oh yeah, I... Are you making a site thing? You keep mentioning making a website with all of like the hacks. And having a... A page with all of the hacks for... What's it? For XDF. Nice. Oh yeah, that's why I remembered you, because L was in the stream, and I remembered Toggle Hop, and then that reminded me of you doing that. Are you going to try and get a uh, xdf.gg extension? Let's see if Mara will give you one of them. Fancy. You don't need to text to, te to, <laughs> text to HTML. You could dump raw text files as a .html file and they will just render. The beauty of the modern web Rename that .txt to a .html and it will open just fine. Rename it to index.html, dump it in a server file and it will just work. Put an h1 at the top, don't even need to open a body, it will just sort itself out these days. Hey, it'll be the fastest loading website. I also thought before XDWC if we've got a load of hacks that might be useful for it and like set up specific to XDF it would be quite funny to do a Xenotic setup hacks pro players don't want you to know except they do because we're telling you and just dump some random shit, like toggle hop. And uh, FPX hacks. XGWC technically pay to win though. Proven. If you've got a better computer that can run at more FPS, you can get more net FPS and go faster.
But that's why you're not pro, in it, does, because you got like a crappy laptop. So you're running at 60 FPS. I'm going to blame the same thing, even though I don't have a crappy laptop or anything. But I do have a crappy laptop, but I don't play on it. Uh, I cap at 250, because otherwise my friends feel but I don't see the point in using the power. It's like the setup guide for um, for Quake World. Recommend a minimum of the 144Hz screen for Quake World in, in their actual beginner's guide. It's mad. Minimum of a one, and then minimum 1,000 FPS because you've got to be for physics reasons you've got to be a multiple of 77, and then it's a multiple of 77 that's as close to your refresh rate as possible. So they recommend like a fucking 1500 FPS cap and then it's like can you actually run that like yes it's only Quake but there is some serious you know Xenotic just won't run over a thousand FPS For the extra FPS, the routing, the strafe percent, I know, the skills. Mate, I'd be a Tour de France champion if it wasn't for the f fact that I just need a bit better of a bike and like 350 watts on my FTP. And some EPO. <laughs> there was someone, I'm not sure how true this was, but it was kind of this comment from, I can't remember who, reasonably smart journalist, basically saying that the gains from doping, the ways that Armstrong did, probably wouldn't increase you to that inhuman level that it did for Armstrong anymore. If you were, you know, because he was still training the best possible training ways that they had at the time. But then he was getting basically doubled by the doping. Whereas these days, apparently, there's just not that much room ahead of the training. Because the, they've found ways to naturally adapt the body and just train better to naturally adapt the body in the ways and get that much. Because the EPO doping was red blood cell count. Well, they've found ways by doing uh, altitude training, different sorts of training to get ridiculous red blood cell counts. You can't increase that anymore. There's a physical limit. Yeah, just write yourself out on Adderall. Make everything go in slow motion. Nah, motors are, you can't hide a motor. It's been tried. It's been tried, because they're too loud. 
the only time where it's going to be useful for that for one they're too loud for two they're so easy to see because of the carbon frames they literally just go around with scanners and scan the frames and go what the fuck is that massive metal box next to your pedals yeah I had another person sure the real motor doping is holding on to the bloody team cars and the support motorbikes are getting dragged up by them it's not used in the actual race like you know the the head-to-head -head racing part of it but when people drop off the back they just hang on to the team cars get dragged back up to the you know the back of the group and then boom ah oh, motor in the shoes yeah no, that wouldn't work because spe just specifically for cycling, the integrity of how we look is of the utmost importance. And a, a motor in the shoes is gonna make the um, is gonna make them a bit too big, a bit too ugly, and they'll get banned for for looks rather than for actually having a motor in them. Honestly, with the state of helmets right now, you could probably put a massive fucking jet turbine in some of these helmets. Put a vibrating thing up your butt. That would make you ride faster, I'm sure. But you're not going to be able to use it for team tactics. This isn't chess. Ain't gonna work for cycling because um, they've just got radios in their ears. Team managers can just talk to them. They can talk back as well. It's quite funny when you see them talking back because for one they've got to try and protect the microphone from the wind so that the director in the car can actually fucking hear it. But also, you can't be telling the team what you want them to do and have the guy next to you hear it because he's gonna go you know, you're whispering into the microphone going, attack, in, attack at the top of this hill, attack on the descent, attack... The fucking guy next to you is going to hear that and he's going to go, I'm going to attack on the descent. Hey up. That is true, I would enjoy it. Oh fuck. I did enjoy the video um, my Mike Boyd put out about the chest doping thing with the butt plug, and he actually managed to make a make a working one. His um, But he spoke to a professional and they basically said, so Mike, to beat his friend who was a lot better than him at chess, needed to have an actual position. So it was buzz, you know, it buzzed up to eight times, then a break, then the other eight to tell you which piece to move. So it had to, literally had to give him two pieces of information. Um... which took a while but it was okay because he could kind of he worked out how to listen to it while making talk, talk conversation with his mates and that works for a mates game it doesn't really work in competition but the thing I can't remember what pro he spoke to but they basically said it would work if you're really good at chess all you need to know is is there something 
that's all the information that you would need. You wouldn't need any information of exactly what to do. Just that there is something good or bad that you need to look out for. Like there is a right or wrong move. Or there isn't. And just play what you think. Forgot his name, but he is good at chess. Yeah. I can't remember. He, he talked to an actual pro. Like, his mate was just conventionally quite good. You know, Mike knew how to play chess. I think his rating was like 800, where you start at 1,000. So he's worse than the average. Hans Niemann was the guy that uh, went for cheating. Yeah, well, you'd, you'd, it wouldn't be don't do that, because obviously that was bad. It's more, is there a move that's significantly good? Because I, like, I can play incredible moves when I'm doing puzzles, but I will also completely miss mating one when I'm playing an actual game because I don't know it's there. Whereas when I'm doing a puzzle, you know there's something there. So just having something vibrating that says there is something. You know, there is there is a move, there is mate in five, there is, you know, whatever. There is a winning position out of this position. Everything else is dumb. And then you can look for it. <laughs> Mate in ones just keeps vibrating. I'm not stopping this vibration until you've spotted the mate in one, the fucking winning move. Yeah, it's that thing of the 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 better you are at something, the less you need. Uh, the less extra you need to cheat to be even better. At the top, 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 top of this of any sport, you only need a tiny bit to push you over the edge and be even better because you can figure out the rest of the information. It's like the thing that people said: How are pros cheating at LAN? Because surely people were saying they've got wall hacks. Um, in Counter-Strike and the argument was basically you can't well you can't do wall hacks on LAN because the guy standing behind you is going to see that you've got fucking characters on the screen and markers and the way that some people said oh you could do it would be to use aim hacks instead use aim hacks that are very not sensitive and it'll look through the wall at people So always good players that cheat the most. Eh, no, bad players cheat the most. Good players are the ones that you actually hear about cheating. Because the bad players get caught before they get anywhere. Because if you're bad at the gate, at, at the thing... Of course there's a, you know... This more happens in video games where anyone can be competitive because it's and where cheating doesn't impact you you don't have to think about it in such a harsh way like i don't think that every fucking cycling or local league football event has people cheating you know they're pretty clean but gaming because there's pride and money in it No. You see, I... So, I have a different view on cheating. Mostly because of coming from cycling. In cycling, it doesn't really matter what you do. 
you'll get a two year ban when you get caught for doping. And you can come back from that two year ban and you can dope again. Or you can leave the sport. Or you can, you know. And different people do different things. But there was also there's also David Miller, who brilliant cyclist. And he got done for cheating. And he was. And he admitted it. And he admitted the things he cheated in. And he said, I want those stricken off my record. Here are all the races I cheated in. And he used to do... He had to win X amount of races clean to allow himself to dope. To make it feel like he was okay doping at the top races like the Tour de France. But he did win genuine Tour de France race stages clean. And then when he came back and he realised what he'd done. And he fully sobered up and went clean and he was still a phenomenal rider top of the top of the top no but he was never going to be with the drugs or not top of the top of the top for one specific stage but not you know Tour de France winner or anything like that stage winner yeah but yeah he there's definitely people that can be incredible and cheat at the same time and you have to be a great player to cheat at certain things especially without being caught but you know there's there's certain games where you couldn't be a bad like how trackmania you can't cheat to get good at trackmania even if you completely taz a run you actually have to know what you're doing You have to know how the game actually works to cheat it. Same thing with anybody who does speedrun splicing. Speedrun splicing is always the worst one to me because speedrun splicing proves that it is possible because everything in the run is legit. It just wasn't done per the rules of doing it all in one sitting. You know? It'd be like if I very careful, you know, if I crash right now and very carefully cut it, restarted the stage of, you know, did all that. But, because you've done part A and part B, or, you know, however many splits you did it in, because you've done them all, you legitimately do have the, uh, the skill. And, it, yeah, it's a shortcut. Yeah, people don't want to grind. They Quite often you hear the thing, I thought I deserved it. You know, especially after getting robbed. And that's especially the one from RNG heavy games. It's always the one from RNG heavy games. Um, one guy, Minecraft, obvious example. There's an old Bio... In Bioshock there's a bunch of RNG. I think in Bioshock 2 it is. And one guy spliced his run... Because um, there was a complete cut to black loading screen. So he saved there once he'd got all of the items so that he didn't have to do the RNG. And. Or like one bit of the RNG. And it's like. That's a bullshit one because that basically. you What well, I. What I wanted them to do was implement a rule change where the fucking... You could just do something about the RNG. But it does suck when it's RNG. When it's actually further into the game. Because there was another one where they... Uh, in a different Bioshock game, I think in Bioshock Infinite. They changed the rules of the game so you could use a mod that in, that guaranteed you would get the I, the specific item you need. So it was only like a... It, it reduced the RNG by a lot. Of literally just, you know, open this box and get an item sort of thing. Because there's different bits of RNG. Minecraft, the worst one for me was Minecraft uh, F... Is it FSG? 
So RSG is random seed, SSG is set seed. So FSC, that's it, filtered. Filtered seed. So the seed is guaranteed to be one that you could actually run. It means you play differently because you know that it's it's good. You're not going around trying to find if it's good. And if you get one that doesn't look good, you'll go around and you'll find the things because it, it's guaranteed to have a village, a this, a that. Oh yeah, that was the Halo runner, wasn't it? Yeah. Where he that No, that was even worse, the Halo one, because he basically didn't know how to play the game at all. Yeah, I think he like basically completely, what did he, yeah, there's been a couple, been a couple, there was a fuck up from, I think it was GDQ, um, a couple of years ago, yeah, supposed to play it on hard, couldn't do it, went too easy, still couldn't do it. There was a fuck up from GDQ a couple of years ago where they got a guy in who didn't actually know the game. Like it was a newly released game and he kind of didn't know the game. He was just a runner from previous entries in the series. No, he, he just wanted the um, reputation. It was just a reputation thing. You know, he wanted to be the world's best, the speedrunner. He had legit world records in other categories of Halo. Um, but he cheated to prove that he did. I think he had only ever had anything legit in single ca in single tr single maps. Um, and everything he ever did in full game was fake, something like that. He, he, he was, um, I believe it's the right person, he cheated a competition that was for the first person to beat the game on the insane difficulty, the one up from the normal hard, like you've got to beat the game on hard to be allowed to go replay it in that difficulty, for Halo 2 I think it was. Legendary, that's it. You've got to beat the game on hard to be able to unlock Legendary. And he cheated to prove that he'd done Legendary Deathless. And it was proven that he hadn't. He'd used cheats for God Mode because he wasn't taking enough damage. Like, people counted the number of times they heard a hit sound. And were like, well, if you heard a hit sound four, five times, whatever it is, you should be dead. Or you should at least be visually whatever. I think that was what happened. Don't quote me on that, go watch the video from the guy in the actual Halo community. I need to fucking release PH, how PH cheated so I can make a documentary on the cheater even though there's like fuck all to talk about. But like, make a 10 minute cheating documentary and then we can make Xenotic famous. Who wants to cheat in Art of Rally so we can do the same thing? Just do a bullshit, ah, oh, amazing April Fools video for next year. So I remind me of this: cheat an Art of Rally run. Work with Tur Turbo because he'll let. We might be able to do this properly together. Why would we go to GDQ? It was the early days of GDQ. So they let basically anyone in. Uh, I'll do one of these runs. Like I'll do Kenya Group 4 or whatever. For all Kenya tracks. In the rain. And then just not set it as the rain. And have most of the tracks be the short tracks. And just, and like, do only eight. Upload that, then upload a video 
How this cheetah was exposed as a fake. <laughs> and it's just me going, Oh, I just, I really wanted the world record. I was really struggling to get a world record. Just fucking play it on as a joke video. And it's really like, but how did the, how did the mo moderators not spot it? Well, I just didn't give a shit. <laughs> Yeah, cheat, make video about yourself. Yeah, my fake will be a fake. It'll be a fake fake. And then I'll release that I've actually got the world record. Because I probably will do, because there's so many categories in this game that I could pick one that I actually have the world record on. Which would be even funnier. That would, that would be even funnier. Why did you cheat? There is nobody else on this leaderboard except for you. You could have submitted any time. You could have gone to bed, woke, you could have started the run, done a couple of tracks, gone to bed, woken up, gone to work, come back, done a couple of tracks, had some tea, gone. <laughs> like. That would be hilarious. Yeah, cheat my own world record, expose myself. Have something dumb in it, like, how did we... What was the first suspicion? Not the fact that the track is completely fucking wrong, and that the track list is, you know... It's meant to be a 12 tracks run and I've only done 8. But just do something like, well, normally Craven plays with a controller, but look, they're playing with keyboard. <laughs> and just have that as like the smoking gun. Not normally a group four speedrunner tends to play group S, but played group four for some reason. didn't have a skin on the car that had a pride flag on it. I do actually think that... Um, if this game gets more popular, we're going to have to check that people aren't cheating. Because at the minute, we can kind of trust most people. But guarantee you there is a way to fake the RNG in this game. For the main... for Not for this category, where there's no RNG. But for the uh, career mode, where you get random tracks and random countries. There has got to be a way to um, cheat that. 100% there is a way to cheat that. Anyway. Cheers, Turbo. <laughs> Promise I didn't cheat. If I did, it was an actual accident and it wasn't a troll. See you in April for hacking. <laughs>